Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, everyone. It's Andrew with the Market Mindset. Happy Thursday. Uh, what a day we're catching up with Robert Rolfing, uh, as we all know, the head honcho over at Desert Mountain Energy, CEO of Desert Mountain. Lots of news in the last little while. We had that corporate update uh, that kind of set the stage as to what's happening with helium. I think it's up 300% or so. Uh, the issues with Russia. Uh, we saw that they, the casings were done in uh, four, five, and six, I believe, and that they're putting a tool down there, which is also interesting. And I want to talk to Robert about that. But then today, as well, with the uh, with this latest result, uh, I want to talk about the what this means to the company, uh, what why this was you know kind of put out there, and uh, and and just catch up. So, welcome to the show, Robert. Um, it's great to see you again. Hey, thank you, Andrew. Great to be here. I always love visiting with you. We have we have fun times visiting. Absolutely. So, you know, the, the stock is climbing. I don't really worry so much about the stock, but it's hitting all these milestones. And certainly the stage is set. People are very antsy as we're creeping closer to production, but there's lots of things to be done before then anyway. And uh, this latest release is, uh, I mean, it makes sense to me, but I think it's good to spell it out to, to everyone as to what the intent is here, you know, why why take this approach? What's going on? Uh, why don't you tell us what uh, what the thought is here? Well, one of the things with uh, I we had seen with trucking uh, initially, just to give folks an idea, because most people have they don't do this business, so they have no idea what it is. Uh, so to move the rig out the first time, it was about twenty five thousand bucks. Move it one way. And then we moved from number one to number two, and that was about another 13 or 14,000. And then to move it back, it was 33. Then well, number three had escalated to 67 for, you know, to move. Uh, we got some of that uh, uh, on the move back, got reduced a little bit, just because they, somebody else picked it up uh, and they were going to use it. So it ended up saving some of the cost. but you, you don't always have that happen. And then well number four, it was 93,000 to move it. Yeah. Well number five, it was 167 just to move the rig there. And, and then it gets to moving the rig from five to six, just to go a couple miles was 64. From six to seven was 77. Incredible. And then to move it back, total cost are 173. So, you know, we have spent just over $700,000 in the first seven well on moving a rig. Yes. And the associated equipment. Uh, that doesn't include casing or anything else. But, you know, with the bigger rig, it costs more too because there's some large substructures and it, it's a lot more weight. Uh, so I had actually started looking uh, almost eight months ago uh, into what it would take to buy a trucking company. And we actually had explored looking at buying uh, two different trucking companies. And I just didn't want to get into having 300 plus employees and having trucks all over the U.S. And it, it just logistical nightmare. So really... It worked out that we uh, uh, picked up five vehicles, all heavy haul. Uh, two of those five are ultra heavy haul. And one of them is, it is <laughs> one of the largest, has one of the largest trailers to go with it. Uh, it's not stuff you go down the road at 80 miles an hour with. None of this is. Uh, well, forgetting what we spent here, uh, we will be well under a million by the time the, the company is fully set up. The trucks are all trucks are in there. The drivers, 
money to run the company uh, separate corporation for a couple, uh, three months and insurances. And that's one of the other things you have to deal with uh, is insurances. And so the company was set up as an LLC, not a corporation, regular corporation. It adds protection uh, for the uh, main corporation. Based on what we're paying for these, these rigs and everything, it's less or it's pretty close to what we paid for just for the trucking thus far on seven wells. Yeah. Then, okay, if I'm going to maintain, you know, X number of employees there, the next thing for me to do was arrange to have, I'm not going to be sitting and pay on wait around for them to come to work for us. So where else do we do with the heavy haul? And there's a lot of other extreme heavy haul opportunities out there. So this is actually not only will save us money, number two, I can have a rig when I want it. Yes. You know, when it's available to be moved, I'm not waiting 10, 14 days to get in queue to get something moved. Yeah. So it, and time is money. And uh, bringing that in, that helps there. But there is such a lack of trucking. Logistics for everyone, any company right now, logistics was a problem. I can keep them busy. This is going to be a uh, cash flow in the sense by the time we're up and running, we'll only have about an additional maybe six months, six and a half months of, uh, of runtime this year. But what we're looking at is something that uh, this year we would still probably turn uh, or net uh, somewhere between three to five and on an entire year with other specialty heavy haul we're looking that this will be a uh, somewhere between a 12 and $18 million a year return. That's a net yeah. profit coming back. Which so, is an excellent business on itself just to be running, never mind that's you're solving it. a bunch of problems that you have already. And, you know, I kind of like it too. I mean, you're a, a vertically integrated company. That's the, the goal here. So the more aspects that you can control, the better. Uh, and when you have this type of price run, and people, you know, when they're talking, they go, oh, you know, there's going to be time constraints because of construction, because of transportation and logistics. If you can start controlling as many factors as those as possible, and because you had a big war chest, which is always wonderful mm -hmm. to have, which other companies don't foresee or don't have or don't have that opportunity, that has put you in a situation that uh, you can have these really interesting problem-solving events that become profit centers and when they don't even need to be, it's just solving a problem and it becomes a problem. So I think that's, that is just the way my mind works. Uh, this was an opportunity that came up out of something else we we're already looking at. Um, I just didn't want to spend $10 million uh, a year ago to come up with trucking. And this is a way for a, under a million total on everything. Uh, it's set, it's in, and it has a chance it will pay for itself within months of having it. No, it's, it's once again, it's you're solving an issue, you're getting control of your own destiny. Uh, and, you know, people are starting to really wake up to the fact that this supply chain issue is, is shocking, never mind inflation and everything else. So to see it specifically, but the ability to address it and solve it in a profitable manner is, is wonderful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great news as we're leading up. Um, and I think this is the time frame on our, on our schedule too, when we look at the milestones yep. where... Uh, can we talk about contracted? Can we talk about what's happening behind the scenes there? I'm looking at uh, most of the contracts that we're looking at change from spot to people are wanting five-year contracts. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they're looking for some assurances and yes. pricing. And that was one thing with the uh, force majeures that everybody threw out. And pricing just got, hey, if you want it, pay it. You yes. know, sir. And Don and I have talked about this. We've discussed this within the company. We do not want to be known as trying to get the last buck out of anybody. It's yeah. not good business. We are want to build long-term relationships with people. I'm not looking for a flash in the pan. Yeah. And people, I, and I've already he have heard from some people about the, well, you need to really maximize this. You need to no. do that. Yeah. Folks, how long have I been working on this project? Since 99, 
who else has been working on it? Uh, there's other people that are trying to come in and claim, you know, make all sorts of claims. Well, we do this and we're going to do this and that. And it's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a couple other folks that are trying to come out and say, well, we are responsible for this. and We really helped make this. And without us, GME wouldn't be there. And I mean, there's any number of things of I have heard. And it's like, folks, I'm, who started working on this a long time ago? So, yeah. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm famous for saying every month I reset my five year plan. Every yes. single month, it's important. Well, especially nowadays and, because things have changed so much. And uh, it's good to see that commitment to be like, listen, we're a long term story. Uh, could we price gouge and maximize uh, efficient capitalism? Sure, you could, but that wouldn't make any friends. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, we should be making money by also helping and also solving problems. So it's, you know, mm -hmm. as far as things go, it's set up in an extremely you know, uh, promising situation. Uh, and I'll kind of throw this out there too. I mean, I'll see in different forms, people still trying to figure out, okay, if we assume a 1.64% helium, and then we assume right. this flow rate and this. So I've seen about 15 different possible models. Uh, that are, of course, range in lots of different pricing. Uh, yeah. And we won't know that till we know that until we get everything in. And that's coming soon. Uh, yep. So that so it's those are more interesting and, and fun to look at. And that's that, and I know we can't get there until we get there. But I did want to tie back into one other thing in regards to four, five and six. And like and the announcement just uh, was it uh, Tuesday or Monday that you're going back into those wells with this new tool. And I think this is maybe getting back to when you're talking about the noble gases and other gases and impurities or other types of things. And you're going back down there, presumably uh, to either reconfirm numbers or, or, or what's, what's, what's going on there. Well, what it is when you run, when you drill a well and just in general, just to help uh, every uh, folks who are not familiar with this, the way it works, other people, I'll be boring them to tears with this, but in an effort just to help explain when you drill a well and before you set casing, you run what's called open hole log. And there's a different number of tools that we can run. Uh, some of them, you know, there's spectral analysis, there's this, you know, we do. There's a high end number of things. There are tools that we run down and you can look and see what the bedding plane it's called. So the individual layers, what, what direction was north at the time of deposition? Which way is it dipping now? And yeah. what is that angle? And so that's where, when you have that kind of information, you can look at and make statements like we did a couple of pressers ago, that it was like, we know we had closure on this because yes. you can, you know what, you have X number of wells, you see what the bedding, what the dip is, doesn't matter what's going on at the surface necessarily. Yes. Uh, but you can look at what else, uh, the surface expression could be any number of other depositional or other things going on. Or if you have a rift, and is there another fault? Uh, is it an anticline? Is it a rip? You know, is the anticline been broken? There's a lot of people that have looked at that aspect and they say, oh, well, it's just an anticline. Well, you can look right down almost dead center and you can see this, these fractures. And it's like, Okay, if everything's been broken, there are no seals. So go ahead, folks, lease up all that property you want. You may get lucky. You may get a one-off. This is not, it's not the type of uh, formations that you have in, say, Western Canada, which are more like little, little pimples. You're trying to look for specific things. Yeah. Uh, there is something specific in every area that geologically you just have to deal with that's just yeah. yeah that's just life it's not bad it's just yeah. what you have to do so that makes the cost of those wells are going to probably end up being between six and ten million canadian yeah that's a lot of money folks are going to have to raise so yeah it's for for a lot of people they it's you know it's like a lot of stories they think it's it's uh an overnight success, you know, 10 years in the making, in your case, longer than that, it's we're coming 20. Yep. So they don't realize all the work 
as in right now behind the scenes, but even the years leading up, it's just been this kind of rocket ship uh, of excitement and the hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, get to production. I get it. Hey, I'm, I'm not the most yeah. patient guy on the planet, <laughs> but yeah. you know, this, you know, I, it's what I, what I love about these kind of long conversations is people get a sense if they don't get it by now, they're not going to get it of the complexity, the planning, the length of time of planning. And the, also you're not just focused on the, pr the plant, plant right up and running what those numbers might look at. I mean, you're already years ahead. I mean, it's not that mm -hmm. you're discounting it, but you're, you're already like, okay, that's probably going to be fine. We'll work on whatever pops up, but we're, we got to think about this. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what you need. Um, you know, we can let the forums and the chats and the, the people that'll contact me and hopefully less you to bother you during the day of the, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, what'll be this, what'll be that. It'll be what it's going to be. It's coming in a hurry. Those milestones are getting checked off very quick, but you know, it's great to have this, this conversation where we get to see all those intricacies and you know, what you can share. And of course, what you can't. Um, and that's what I really appreciate about, the, about these kinds of conversations is it gets a sneak peek into the, uh, the daily events and what's really going on behind the scenes. There's different types of tools that you can get that are normal. Normally, you will run uh, some type of a gamma ray neutron in an open hole and in a cased hole. And the purpose of that, because the formations, whatever they're emitting for a gamma ray, uh, you can correlate the logs back together between an open hole and a cased hole so that you know within a hundredth of an inch where you are at in that well. It's yeah. not a guesswork. Yeah. Well, I, uh, well, you know... Let's blow something up down here. No, that is not the way we do this. Uh, we use directional charges and a, they are set to go horizontal, burn a hole horizontally, and you can do a little tilt and up and back, but basically to stay within that bedding plane. But for the case hole tool, there are some other tools. And I had worked many years ago with a gentleman in Oklahoma to develop, um, it was for case toll and it was developed to go look for natural gas. And basically you're looking for chlorine molecules. And it's like, people go like chlorine. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, where is water? Where is water now? Where has water been? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's chlorine? What is the, the sodium NaCl? You know, what, what's the byproduct? What are you looking at here? And how a spectral array on that. So it's like the newer tools, we're, we're going to run a newer, a much newer version. Somebody has developed something really good. And we want to correlate that back to the open hole where we know we have samples. Yep. We know where we had uh, on the mass spectrometer we, where we saw hydrogen or helium and, and other elements yeah. uh, and how exactly, because this is going to be a unique setting for this specific tool. It's been around for a few years, but no one's really used it for this. And it's not really been set up to uh, look specifically for helium for um, Knowing what we have already, I think there are some things that we've discussed with them, um, how we can attenuate and massage the numbers afterwards. And it may not work uh, totally. It will show, we'll be able to look and see gas and we'll be able to see, is it compare with where we saw like CO2, a much higher CO2 in a specific zone. Um, there's other minerals that previously uh, you, you can't run an open hole log on to see them. Uh, it, you, you, it hasn't existed, put it that way. Uh, so people have to do assays yep. to delineate exactly what they're looking at, minerals. Um, I think we've, through some things I've worked on over the years, I think I've come up with a way and working with this company, they've come up with some interesting ways to manipulate it. And what we're going to see uh, how this works, because 
what it would give us and the importance of it would be that if we can prove this up over a number, of, say seven or eight or nine wells, maybe 10, then it gives us an ability to say, we could go into a well where someone had not used the mass spectrometer, had not done this, had not done that and the other, and we'll be able to go in into a cased hole and look and see that should be helium there. Yes. Or that should be nitrogen, or it may be a whole lot of CO2. Yeah. And so it gives you a chance to look without uh, having to redrill wells or to go into other things. So, uh, or if you have to drill a one well in an area, it gives you a chance to then correlate all the newest open hole logs with that well, yeah. then correlate it to this, then you can decide where else you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. So, I mean, we, we kind of know, or people would know now that uh, most before now, before you guys specifically, uh, you know, your big oil and gas companies would have been secondary producers of helium. And well, they're not really looking for it. They, it would have been there and okay, mm -hmm. it's there. Um, and they had the, the Bureau of Land Management still had helium. So it was really not that exciting to have it. Maybe they're blowing off. Maybe they're keeping it. Maybe they were selling some of it, but it wasn't a big issue. So in my brain, I'm thinking there's probably lots of places where you could easily go down where they're like, oh, we suspect there's probably stuff down there, but not what we're looking for. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if you can show us, if you can show us that, yes, this is what we're finding. Hey, all right. Interesting. Thank you. You know, there's some other aspects to that, that uh, I think I've talked around this before. But there are probably, I'll just say hypothetically, there is probably a number of companies out there that would love, they're going to be drilling anyway. So they would probably love to work with somebody like us to provide them something else. They'll still dr go drill their horizontal oil wells, but whatever. Yeah. But if they can see something else, they'll put together another package to go do that. Yes. And then it would not be too far flung to see that there could be an opportunity or there should be an opportunity to go in where these folks have already drilled and they have a little bit of gas. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's not really enough to really mess with. It's probably got too much nitrogen in it. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, it's just, there's, there are opportunities there to go in and then strip, take that gas, use the gas that would be wasted anyway, and turn that into a profit center. And we wouldn't be responsible for uh, drilling and completing wells and operation of yeah. wells. In effect, we're just on and be putting a plan on top of a pipeline, which has been done. That's yes. nothing new. Yeah, uh, it's been varying degrees of success, shall we say? It's fair to say, based on our what we've the way we've developed this plant, there are and making them smaller, and to run on the least amount of energy uh, possible. I think it really it lends itself to our design. Yeah, to be able to take that in other places. And I don't think that's very far fetched. You know, and I've had a lot of questions and I know somebody told me there's been some of those questions on the bull boards and the others, and I have conveniently chosen not to address it. But, you know, hypothetically, I think it's uh, would be a logical uh, step for someone to consider. consider. Excellent. Good. Kind of well, like trucking. Trucking, like trucking. Thought. <laughs> but it makes sense. And that's why it's so great when we have the conversation, because along the, the last year, we've seen these issues and problems, but you'd already thought them through and come up with a solution. And that's what, you know, great management's there for. And to be able to have these long conversations to explain to people, not only the thought process and the continuing thought process uh, is that uh, we'll let the, the boards do what they're going to do and they can, you know, come up with their own hypothesis. But yeah. To have this kind of open conversation where people feel and know that, yes, you're thinking about this, you've had that discussion, you're thinking about all these things, but you're still on time table and you're still on track for what they, you know, people want to see the next month, three months, mm -hmm. five years down the road. And uh, 
I won't keep you anymore because there's no, we've please. opened up a lot of cans of worms. We're allowed to talk about some, and some we'll find out soon enough. But I really appreciate you taking this time with us. I thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you. Take care, Robert. We'll talk to you real soon. <laughs>